Very few things fuel mankind's passion for discovery more than the endless wonders of space. In our attempts to probe the unknown, we have developed ingenious technologies over the years. And of all these technologies, nothing has been more revealing than the telescope. Starting as mere handheld devices, these phenomenal instruments have evolved over the centuries into ever larger and more complex structures. The current largest single dish telescope in the world is the 500 meter Aperture Spherical Telescope in China. Known as FAST, this monumental radio telescope was completed in 2016 and consists of a dish half a kilometer in diameter, large enough to fit almost two Titanics end to end. But a couple years ago, NASA put forward the idea for an even larger telescope. And that's not even the craziest part. They proposed a lunar telescope built on the far side of the moon this telescope would sit directly in the bed of a crater and would boast a magnificent dish, over one kilometer in diameter. It seems like something straight out of a science fiction movie, the sheer audacity of it. And yet, having just successfully launched the James Webb Telescope, an incredible achievement in and of itself, there's never been a better time to dream big. A telescope on the far side of the moon might not be that far-fetched at all, but what challenges would we face, and why go to all the effort in the first place? The reason why a lunar telescope would be so groundbreaking is because it would allow us to peer into the cosmic dark ages a period of time shortly after the Big Bang, but before the first stars were born. We can already see either side of this period, the cosmic microwave background beforehand, and the very first galaxies just afterwards. But this middle period, this dark age, which lasted a few hundred million years, is a bit of a mystery. We know it was a time when the universe was filled with hydrogen, which is acting like a kind of fog, preventing us from being able to see inside. But if we could somehow see inside this fog, we'd be able to see the very first galaxies forming, casting all our theories aside and revealing the truth of how they came to be. The best way to see through this fog would be to observe radio waves, especially those with a wavelength over 10 meters. But since observing longer wavelengths also needs a larger antenna, we'd need a pretty big dish one much bigger than the 500 meter telescope in China. That's not even the biggest issue. The main problem is we cannot build this telescope here on Earth. Since radio waves of this wavelength are blocked by the Earth's upper atmosphere, the ionosphere. If you've ever been fortunate enough to see the Aurora Borealis, then you will have seen this part of the atmosphere firsthand. The spectacular northern lights are the result of the ionosphere shielding us from the bombardment of the sun's solar wind. Particles ejected by the sun and hitting the earth at over 45 million miles per hour. Without this part of our atmosphere, life on this planet wouldn't even be possible. And herein lies the problem. In order to peer into these dark ages, what we really need is a very large dish but not on Earth. What we really need is an extraterrestrial telescope. Although still just a concept, the Lunar Crater Radio Telescope is a very real project that has been in development for several years. In 2021, it received half a million dollars in funding and is currently entering phase two of NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. Whilst not yet an official mission, the aim of this funding is to consider how such a telescope could operate, how it would be built, and what challenges might lie along the way. The initial design would be very similar to the largest radio telescopes here on Earth. It would use a web of wire mesh to suspend reflective panels in a crater around three kilometers wide. By suspending a receiver with cables around the center, it would be able to alter its focus slightly by moving this receiver in conjunction with altering the angle of the reflective panels. 
This would mean the lunar telescope would operate in a very similar way to that of the Arecibo and FAST telescopes, albeit on an even larger scale. One of the immediate problems is the design of the wire mesh itself. To maintain its precise shape, the mesh would have to be incredibly strong and flexible, yet lightweight enough to be transported. It would also need to withstand the huge swings in the lunar surface temperature, ranging from minus 173 degrees to plus 127 degrees Celsius. In order to construct the dish, NASA has proposed using its new prototype duaxle rovers, a flexible rover that has an incredible ability of separating itself into two halves, allowing it to repel down hard to reach terrain. It was literally designed to explore crater walls and would therefore make a great rover to help any build operation. However, even with the use of multiple rovers, it's likely that a team of engineering astronauts would also need to be present on the surface acting as operators and overseeing its overall construction. Although we've not landed on the moon for many years, this is mostly because of how expensive it has been to launch into space, something which is quickly changing with the rapid progress that's being made at SpaceX. Starship is a fully reusable, super heavy lift launch vehicle created by SpaceX and is the tallest and most powerful launch vehicle ever made by mankind. Elon Musk has claimed that when fully operational, the cost of launching to low Earth orbit will be around $2 million, only a fraction of the cost it once was when we last stepped on the moon. This means that the cost of transporting all the materials, rovers and astronauts is actually kind of feasible. Starship should be able to transport around 40 tons to the lunar surface, or if it's refueled in the moon's orbit, a full 150 tons. Given that the 300 meter wide Arecibo telescope had a dish weighing around 300 tons, it would theoretically take only a couple of trips to transport an even larger and lighter dish made of more modern materials. But trying to build anything on the far side of the moon comes with its own challenges. Compared to the side that faces us, the far side has much harsher terrain with much bigger impact craters and relatively few open plateaus. It actually has one of the largest craters in our solar system, roughly 2,500 kilometers in diameter, which is even larger than the radius of the moon itself. Although being on the far side also means there would be less interference from Earth, the flip side is there would also be much less protection from things like solar flares. Just like how the ionosphere protects us here, on the moon there would be no such protection and any equipment, any astronauts would be completely exposed to the rest of the solar system. Building a telescope on the moon is definitely not for the faint-hearted. Although companies like SpaceX have been able to achieve incredible progress in the last decade through trial and error, the same cannot be said here. Unfortunately, we can't just put some astronauts on a starship, along with some aluminium panels and funky looking rovers, and send them on their way. It's going to take a lot more planning than that to pull this one off. But it is an exciting thought that one day, mankind's largest telescope may not even be on the planet. The Lunar Telescope would certainly mark the dawn of a new age in cosmic exploration, giving us glimpses into the earliest moments of our universe, revealing secrets we've only been able to dream about until now. It's a highly ambitious project, almost daringly so, but why not? Just like the James Webb Telescope, if there's one thing we've really proven, it's that there's no limit to humanity's ambition that ability to dream big, be bold, and work together to make it happen. <laughs>